busy? I am. Let's do this. So many kids in the kitchen. Plant-based food to prepare. So many kids in the kitchen. With ideas we're happy to share. Hello everybody and welcome to another So Many Kids in the Kitchen show. My name is Ella Rodriguez and together with Cody Stubbe and the Lip Barman, we invite you and we welcome you uh, to join us again for another show. Um, we are Food for Life instructors with Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine. And in today's show, we turn around the cameras on our kids, and you get to see our kids cooking some holiday treats for you today. Um, we're going to go from kitchen to kitchen, and if you have any questions while the show is happening, please type them into the chat, and we'll be happy to answer them during the show or at the end. And we have a surprise for you today. We have Faith Robs, the author of Plant Bates Cooking for Kids, joining us for Q&A, and she's going to give you some good tips, so make sure you join us for Q&A right after the show. And we are going to start with Anu, so take it away, Anu. Hi. Um... Um, my name is Anuragini and I'm in Durham, North Carolina, and today I'll be showing you how to make strawberry ice cream. Um, the original plan was to make strawberry ice cream and mint chip ice, um, but I got sick and I didn't really have time to prepare that, so today is just strawberry ice cream. Um, but if you look at the recipe book, um, um, thingy, um, you can see the recipe for mint ice chip ice also um but today i'm going to show strawberry ice cream okay so this requires frozen strawberries milk or creamer optionally cinnamon vanilla and dates um it's a very simple recipe and it's really easy to make and it's really fast and it tastes really good so I'm going to add some strawberries to the blender, frozen strawberries to a blender. And strawberries are very high in vitamin C. And did you know they're not really a berry? They're actually part of the rose family. I thought that was really cool. I just learned that. Um, and then I'm going to add some milk. And, um, instead of milk, you can use, like, some sweet creamer or something. Um, but since I'm not using that, I'm going to be using dates. And then I'm going to put a bit of vanilla in. And a bit of cinnamon. And then I'm just going to blend it and see if we need more milk or, or if it's good. Oh, so uh, remember, we're using a high-powered blender, like a Blendtec. You have a Vitamix. 
But what should people do if they have a regular blender? Because putting frozen uh, fruits in like that may damage the blender. So if you have not a Vitamix or not a high power blender, then you would just blend like regular strawberries and then freeze the mixture that you create. It won't probably be as smooth, but it'll be pretty good. Or use still. partially defrosted strawberries. Careful to use what comes with your blender. This is meant for the Vitamix. <laughs> That looks really good. And there you have a scoop of ice cream. And now I have a spoon to try it. Mmm, so good. So strawberry and so yummy. And it's also really smooth and really nice. You can see there. Um, if everything had gone to plan and I had done the mint one also, um, I would have had like a scoop of red and a scoop of green here, like Christmas colors, but red is fine. So thank you for watching me make ice cream. And now I'm going to pass it on to Ava, Ella, and Nora in Omaha, Nebraska. Good luck. Hi everybody. Merry Christmas. So you're going to be making some fun holiday recipes. Isn't that right guys? Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll be making some coconut snowballs. So first you need three cups of coconut. I did a cup of flaked coconut, which is a little bit like less finely ground, and then two cups of the more finely ground shredded coconut. So it has more of a fun texture. Then I want a cup of coconut cream and a half cup of agave. You could use you could also use maple syrup, but then it won't be as white. It'll have more of a brownish color and won't really look like snowballs. 
We don't want yellow snowballs, right? Yeah. That'd be gross. All right. Mix this in. Put this over here. And then shake this up a little bit. I'll make a hole in the middle. I have a hole. Mix this up. You can use your hands for this as long as they're clean. Fly a hole. So that way everything will get more evenly mixed. See? Hole. Perfect. Now we pour in the coconut milk. The coconut milk. Woo! And then we are done to mix it. No, we are not going to mix it around yet. Because there's no more coconut milk in here. We don't want to waste any. This is delicious. Alright, so now we mix it up. You want it to have a really nice consistency because it has to be like workable with your hands. I think you put the tea mess in there. Nope. And why are you using Get back. a tiny Here. fork? Well, I'm using a tiny fork. Because why not? Tiny forks are fun. Yeah. We love tiny forks. You should paint them. It's also really fun to eat with tiny forks. They're really fun to see tiny forks. I like a tiny box. Yeah. Maybe you're weird. <laughs> right. So now you want to get a little bit and roll it into a ball. Me! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Try to squish it together because it tries to fall apart. But you just want little balls. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Ella likes kind of smaller ones. She doesn't like so much coconut. I like a lot of coconut. And then, Nora, what size do you like? I like a size is tiny. How tiny? That tiny. That's not tiny. That's not I tiny. mean that tiny. Ah. Well, see, we have a few different sizes. You can make any size you like. And these will now go in your refrigerator to cool up for about 10 minutes. And 10 then, minutes. When they're done, you can put some chocolate on them, like these. These are some I made earlier. You can use white chocolate or you can use dark chocolate and have them be more of an almond joy. Unless the walls, you can put peppermint on top. Does look good. And then, yummy. I'll, I'll just show you how to put chocolate on this for a demonstration. You want some melted chocolate, whatever kind you like. You can put a little bit of peppermint extract in there for fun too if you like. Mix that up. Maybe it's a demon. Alright, I'm gonna coat them in the chocolate. Cool, 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 cool. This is kind of falling apart here, as you can see, which is why it's best to freeze them first. But I'm sure it'll still be delicious. <laughs> a delicious mess. Yeah. Alright, well, we better wait till they're frozen. <laughs> LOL. While we're waiting for them to freeze, why don't you show us your recipe, Ella? Okay. Today, I'm going to be making chocolate peppermint dip. So, um, first we have five dates in um, water. You just fill it till the, um, oh yeah, these are five pitted dates. And you fill it till the dates are covered. And you microwave it for one minute. So, then you're going to take a severed or spoon with holes in it and take out the dates. Try and make sure there's no water in it. And you want to put it in a little blender. Little blender. Mm -hmm. Blender. Get up. Get up, silly. Sit up straight. So I can see Ella. Is that all? Just a I'm bit gonna... more. That's a lot of things. Okay, and then when you have those in there, you are going to add a half teaspoon of peppermint extract. Yummy! Oh, wait, hold on. I usually like to add the um, fourth, or not fourth, um, half cup of coconut cream in first before the peppermint extract. And 
then I'll add the half teaspoon of uh, peppermint extract. If you can't tell, we really love coconut and peppermint. <laughs> Saying we're using so much of it. I love it. And chocolate. And chocolate. We love chocolate too. Tight. And let's see. Here we go. I think that's good. Need a little hand with the wood? I'm good. Go, I Actually, love yeah. Get that lid. Ooh, it is all tight. Oh, I think we can get though. Let me see. No, it's stuck. <laughs> Difference between cocoa and cocoa, or cocoa and cocoa, cacao. No, it's cacao and cocoa. And then cocoa. you want to mix it all cocoa. together. That. <laughs> Too much cocoa and chocolate. Yeah, the difference between cacao, cacao, and cocoa is one of them is roasted, the other one isn't. Cacao is not roasted. Cocoa is. And this is cocoa. Whew. So that means the beans have been roasted before they were ground. Okay. Just need to mix all this in. Yummy chocolate. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, chocolate. Go, go, explosion. Well, at least you smell Yo, like chocolate. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's much worse things to get all over you than some chocolate. <laughs> you can just lick it off, right? Yeah, like mud. Mud is even worse on chocolate. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Okay, just a couple more. Ooh, that's nice and rich. So, Ella, what can you put in, what can you dip in this dip? Well, we like to, well, I like to prepare it with pretzels. Because then you have the sweet, or the salty, and the, yeah. Would you like me to get you some pretzels? I have already prepared one here, with topped with peppermint. And, let's take a pretzel. Dip it on. And, and then, then some more. yeah, we already crushed up peppermint. some peppermint. Oh, chocolate here. Ah, chocolate. And, and here's just the dip if you just want to eat it like that. Okay, now it's your turn, Nora. What will you be making? Well, first she'll show us how to crush some peppermint, right? Nora? Uh -huh. Here. So what you want to do is get a cutting board. Some sort of hammer thing you can use, and then some tiny candy canes put in a plastic bag. Yeah. And you smash them. Smash Just make sure not to smash your fingers. <laughs> I do it with both of these hands so it won't be too heavy. That looks pretty good, Nora. Yeah, good job. And I know you've got a little bowl here you can put that in. Okay. You like me too? Now, yeah. Nora, why don't you tell everyone what you'll be making with some of this peppermint? I'm gonna make some of these dates. I already made some. But no, you don't need to get the ones you made yet. You don't need to get those yet. Alright. You know what they'll look like right now? But I'm not doing one for now. So, first, you want to open a date. 
and these are pitted dates, so I don't have any dates and or uh, seeds inside. So it's gonna look like this, and there's a little opening, and then you can make this back. What kind of is that, North? I'm dog. I always said dog. Like it's this. a pecan. Pecan. I always said that. What kind of nut is your favorite nut, Nora? Um. Can you let me do this so can see what I don't doing. know. What's yours, Ella? Probably pecans. Pistachios are mad. Yeah, those are pretty good too. Alright, you got that good? All filled up, Nora? Now we're gonna put some dark chocolate on top. Alright, how do you want me to do it? Well, I want to do it like. Um, so I want to do it like this one. Do like a spoon? No. I would like to do You're it. Gonna pipe Ooh, it. pipe it. I believe. If this tip isn't too small. Hmm, might be. It's broken. I might go hard. I'm careful my exploding. Okay. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, you yeah. a spoon. Scissors. All right, ready? Let's go. Wee, it's working. All right. Let's Ooh, do some fun I like how it's yeah. swirly. That's Wee. cool. You just want some fun swirls? Yeah. How's that? Yay. Fancy little Ooh. date, isn't it? And you can wet them tall, and you can put them in the freezer if you would like. Now we can each have some of these treats. Mm. So everybody can pick one to have if you this I'll one follows too. Oh, hmm. Mm, Nora, which one are you going to have? I think I'm going to have. I think I'm going to have one of Ava's. I'm going to have this one. Mmm, mm, delicious. Like These are very nice. Really good. <laughs> but I'm just starting to do mm. That's good. Mm. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you're having as much fun as we are. Yeah, where's the spoon? Merry Christmas. <laughs> where's the now we're going on over to Max to our friends Max and Mia. Mom, can't wait to see spoon? what you guys come up with. Mom, where's a spoon? Those are great ideas. Hi, my name is Max, and today I'm going to be making cookies for Santa when he comes down the chimney, so we can get back down it next year. So to do this, we're going to need oats. We're going to need some. Banana, a banana, um, unsweetened apple juice, applesauce, my bad, and a teaspoon, a fort, I mean, a, a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Sorry. So, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to peel the banana and put it inside the blender. I mean, the food processor, sorry. When you put it in you break it up so it's not too chunky and then we're going to put the unsweetened applesauce unsweetened not sweetened because um we don't want to be leaving santa with too much sugars and plus apples are already sugared up with healthy sugars that are good for you and also have fiber so i put my apple juice in there Apple sauce, I mean, sorry, keep saying apple juice. And then I'm going to put one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oops, I put a little too much, I'm gonna have to be more careful next time. So, then you are going to put the cap on your food processor or blender or whatever you're gonna use, and you are going to mix it just a little bit, like a few pulses, if you have this food processor. Like a few of those, and then we're going to add our oats. And then I'm just gonna take this, I guess, and take it off that, so we have more in the food. 
Um, and also, uh, we are going to add our mini chocolate chips. I forgot to say this is one of the ingredients, I'm sorry. But um, I'm gonna put, a, I might as well just put, I'm gonna put half a cup. Um, it's better if you do that on the counter. Oh yeah. Um, so I'll put the cup. What kind of chocolate chips are those? These are vegan mini chocolate chips. And they don't have any dairy in them. So we're going to put our chocolate chips in there. And then we're going to cap it back. And put it on low. that is doing that so I'm going to need to get a little a spoon or something to push it down all on the sides should down a little bit so it actually gets blended and then I'm going to do that again make sure you put it just do this a few more times. I'm just going to do it this last time so you guys get the idea. Okay, so now I'm going to have it and I'm just going to put it down here so that I can make it to look like cookies. So the first thing we need to do oh, is take this out because you don't want to be sticking your hands and getting it on the blade and stuff because that's not good. And then you're just going to take a little ball, make sure you wash your hands before you do this, a little ball of this and you're going to squeeze it like this a little bit and then make it a little ball and then put it right on there. You can push it down a little bit to make it cookie shape. If you want to be creative with this, then you can you can make it any shape you want. If you have cookie shapers, or you could just do it by hand if you're um, an artist or something. Um, and then um, you can make it a Santa Claus head shape or something or Santa Claus hat shape. Um, and then I'm just gonna wash my hands a little bit because my hands are dirty. So then they should look like that. And then you're just gonna put them in the, just gonna put them in the oven for like 10 minutes on boil. And then you, and this is how they should look at the end. So the, uh, this would be the end result. So I'm just gonna try one. This is so good. You guys have to try this recipe. I'm sorry, I'm talking with my mouthful. But let's leave the rest for Santa. So now I'm going to pass it on to Mia. And she's gonna do her recipe. My name is Mia, and today I'm going to show you how to make fingerprint, like, they look like almond joys. I like, I just call them fingerprint bites, but that's it. So, first thing that we're, we're going to do is we're going to take some dates, and these dates are pre-soaked in hot water, so they're softer and easier for the blend, for the food processor to blend. And we noticed I used the same food processor that Max did. Yes, I did because our recipes are similar and we don't need to wash the whole food processor. Um, save the um, date water because 
we're gonna need to use it for later. Or we might need it to use for later. Um, next we're gonna take like half or quarter cup of OJ and pour it in here. Next thing we're gonna need to take is some peanut butter and actually with peanut butter you can use peanut butter or sun butter and one thing about peanut butter is well a few things the first thing is when you buy peanut butter natural peanut butter make sure that the only ingredient is peanuts no added oils nada then when oh when you buy peanut butter natural peanut butter it's gonna be you're gonna notice that there's like a layer of oil and then a layer of peanut butter that doesn't mean that it's bad that just means that it needs it's not ready to use so all you need to do is put it in a blender blend it for 30 seconds or so and then it's ready to use and if you don't like sun butter you can always use almond butter or any other nut butter Just gonna pour the peanut butter in here. And make sure it's the smooth kind if you don't want chunks in your recipe. The next thing, oh yeah, okay, so we have to actually blend this first because we before we start adding the thick stuff, we have to make sure that this is fully gone in first. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Yep. It's all mixed in there. Just like that. Next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to add some oat flour. Um, you don't have to buy oat flour how it is cause that might be a little expensive. So what I like to do, just take some rolled oats and put them in the blender and they'll just fine grind them. And you have oat flour. So once you put the oats in, you're gonna want to take some unsweetened coconut flakes. And then, okay. And we're gonna need some spices to this. So I like to add some cinnamon. You're gonna need about a half teaspoon of this. And a fourth, that's why I added two of them. And then we're going to need, oh, and the oat flour, that was three cups, I'm sorry. Then we're gonna take some salt and we're just gonna sprinkle a few things, like about a fourth of a teaspoon in here. I think that's pretty good. Then we're gonna take, oh yeah. Now we're just gonna blend this. because this doesn't really blend that well. That should do better. There we go. 
go. And when you finish blending this, you want it to kind of look like this. So I know it's all on that side right there, but it's gonna be, you need it to be that texture. Then, oh, these are some of the finished products. So I'm just gonna show you how to make those. I'm gonna take this to make sure it's the right texture. Yeah, I think we could work with that. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna roll it up into a ball like that, and then you're gonna flat it down and put a little thumbprint in it. That's why they're called thumbprint bites. And then you're going to, oh, my hands are really sticky. Where's my gel? You're gonna take some jelly. Before I do this, my hands are <laughs> really gonna cause a lot of mess here, so I'm just gonna rinse them. And right here, we're gonna open the jelly, and the jelly shouldn't have any other like added sweetener. It should just have the natural fruit itself. Then you're gonna kind of scoop it into there. That was too much. Put some on the side right here. Put some jelly in it. And I'm gonna make another one to put some chocolate chips in it. These are gonna, these, you can make these as big or as small as you want. I call them um, thumbprint bites because I want them to be able to fit in my mouth perfectly. And we're gonna take some of the Enjoy Life cookies that Max used. That was way too much. But you're gonna take a few and you're gonna put them in here, just like that. And then let these cool down for a little bit. And that's it. These are really, really good. I don't wanna put one in my mouth right now just because they're very chewy and I know I'm gonna be chewing for an hour here. So I hope you guys try this and like this. And happy holidays. Okay. All right. Let's give um, me and Max a moment to get back out of the kitchen. I think they're joining their mom. Let's bring Ella in. So great. So thanks for watching. And kids, that was each recipe was really good. I'm actually eating a new ice cream right now. It's really good. <laughs> and I wish that. Uh, Ella, Nora, and Ava, I wish I had your treats here. And oh, and there's Max and me. I wish I had your treats as well. So um, we're open for Q&A, and we're giving away two nice prizes. So um, from now on, Cody, would you keep track of everybody who asks questions? And then we'll do a random drawing. Or maybe Ella, because you, you have a little girl on your lap. So Ella, would you keep track of all the people who ask questions? And I'm delighted to bring on camera Faith Ralphs. Hello, Faith. Hey, so, this is me and my daughter, Charity. She loves to be a kid in the kitchen with me as well. Hi, Charity. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, just found out about your book, Faith. Apparently, Cody already knew and owned your book. Um, and Cody, can you hold up the book, please? Because you own it. We're delighted that you've written a book that really is very similar to our okay. show. It's <laughs> Plant-Based Cooking for Kids. Uh, and you focus like we do, not just on vegan, but on whole food plant-based, which is wonderful. Thank you for writing the book. I can't wait to see it myself. <laughs> You're welcome. Could you, um, before we ask the kids questions, could you take a moment and tell us a little bit about your book? And um, maybe, maybe you could start with just a bit about your journey. What brought you to whole food plant-based eating? Yeah, um, when I was a kid, actually, I loved going to the library and going to the kids' cookbook section and taking books home and trying recipes. Um, but I realized as an adult, as I've gotten older, that most kids' cookbooks have a lot of cheese and milk and um, sugar and just not a lot of healthy ingredients. And kids deserve the healthiest ingredients for their bodies. And so I 
wanted to fill that need of having like a fun, colorful kids cookbook with lots of pictures, um, with, with recipes that I would be happy if my kid chose any one of those recipes, you know? Um, but I, I ate fairly healthy as a kid, but then I, um, really started to eat more whole food plant-based, um, about seven years ago. And I've never really had drastic health problems or anything. I just feel like it's the right way to eat. Um, yeah, it's, it's brought me a lot of joy to eat healthier like this. That's excellent. And what brought you to write the book? Um, having kids of my own. So I have three little kids now. They're four, two, and newborn. And um, I love to cook with them. And I just wanted a colorful, fun cookbook with recipes that we would actually use. So these are my family's favorite recipes. And some of my kids' favorite recipes are in there. That's great. And you're in Idaho, I think, right? Yep. One of my favorite uh, singer-songwriters, Carol King, lives in Idaho. <laughs> oh, I need to look her up. I don't even know her. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand that there's some nice vegan restaurants in, um, what's the capital? I forgot if Idaho. In Boise? I yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Idaho is one of the like five states in the country I've never been to. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll have to come. You'll have to come have dinner with my family. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Well, I have some questions for the kids, and one question has already come in from our audience. So, um, and Faith, if you don't mind, we'll also include you. You can feel free to help answer some of the questions. So a question came in from um, Patricia Campana, the one who used dates, who's you? The one who used dates. Yeah, so starting with you, Anuragini, what dates did you use? So I knew what dates did you use? I used pitted Daglet Newer dates, and, um, I think last show I talked about um, that cool date place that gets all those, that has all those cool dates, but um, Deglet Noor dates you can buy anywhere, basically at any store. Yeah. Cody, do you remember the name of the company of the dates Oasis. place? Oasis Dates. We love Oasis Dates. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, they're more expensive. So if you're cooking with them, I don't recommend using the Oasis Dates. Oasis Dates are better just when you eat them. Who else used dates in your recipe? Ella, Ella and Nora. Yeah, Nora, that was the main part of your recipe. Nora, can you tell, do you know what kind of date you used in your recipe? And by the way, Nora, we should brag to everybody, you're a kindergartner now, aren't you? Um, pitted dates. Pitted dates, okay. Good, yeah, it's important to use pitted dates. Do you know, did you use, uh, maybe mom knows what kind of date you used. I think Ella knows, Ella, you know? what? Um, they're medjool dates. And um, Ella, you did you pick out the dates? Did you help pit them? Um, they were pitted already when we bought them. Okay. And then there was a question, Max, were you using quick oats or something else? These are Patricia's questions. And uh, Ella, you've noted down Patricia's name for she's in the drawing. Okay. Um, I used rolled oats, but it really doesn't matter which oats you use. You can use any. Okay. There was another question that came in also from Patricia, Ava coconut cream, what is that? So coconut cream is like when you get a can of coconut milk, like you have the watery part and then you have the thicker coconut part. Coconut cream is just that thicker part. You get more of it if you put the can in the fridge beforehand. Okay. So I had a couple questions. So, um, for Mia, you had talked about sun butter. What is sun butter and how does it taste compared to peanut butter? Well, um, I think it tastes not the same, but different in a good way. And it's made out of sunflower seeds. Uh, yeah, just crushed up sunflower seeds. Max, I love what you made and it's really a question for the girls in Omaha too. Uh, and that's about cleanup. Do you help with cleanup? Because I love what you made. And to be uh, to be honest, I, I don't tend to make things like that, although they look good because it requires a lot of cleanup. The things stick a lot. So does, does mom or dad do the cleanup or do you help with the cleanup when you make things like that? Well, my mom and my dad kind of do it. I hitch back and get lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you for being honest. <laughs> what was that? I said, thank you for being honest. <laughs> that's one thing. All these kids in the kitchen are really great in the kitchen. Um, 
so I think as we get older, though, we have to focus a little bit more on clean up. <laughs> yeah. So clean up is also really important. Um, Ella, can you talk a little bit about the blender you used? Little Ella, it was different than your mom's. Yeah. So it's like really little. So it's like easier for making like, like one cup smoothies and stuff like that. Okay, is it like a ninja, perhaps, or something? I think it's a, like a magic bullet. Okay. So one thing we always talk about is that to eat this way, you don't need to buy anything expensive. Uh, if you want to blend, you can buy a, you know, go to a, a thrift store and get a used $20 <clears throat> blender if you want. Uh, we all have, I, I don't know about Faith, but the rest of us have high-powered blenders. We have, do we have two Vitamix? No, we have one Vitamix. We used to have two. No, we have no, we have three Vitamixes. <laughs> so, or do we even have four? We have no, at least we three, have three. We have at least three Vitamixes, <laughs> and and those are expensive. Blendtec is also an excellent quality um, blender. And so, what Anuragni did? Did you want to talk about that? You put solid strawberries in the blender, and we talked about it a little bit. Do you want to share a little bit more about that? If you have a regular blender, it'll probably break break your blender, um, like your blender. <laughs> Um, so you wouldn't want to use that, obviously, but, um, as I talked about, you can just blend, like, regular strawberries and then freeze the mixture and then crush it with a fork or something to get, like, a creamy ice cream. Yeah, if I were to do the, the strawberry ice cream, um, and what other fruits go well with that ice cream? Instead of strawberry, what else did you do? You could use a mango or peaches, frozen peaches or frozen mangoes. Um, my dad doesn't like blueberry ice cream, but I love it. It doesn't have a great consistency, but it tastes really good. You know, we've also experimented with watermelon and watermelon is really cool. If you make the watermelon without any milk, it's like a watermelon ice. And if you add a little bit of the soy milk or a little creamer, it's like a, it's a cool, like creamy watermelon, which is really good. Um, and cantaloupe comes up pretty well too, right? So yeah, if you're having, if you have a regular blender, then what I would do is I would partially defrost the fruit. So you could do what Anuragini said too, and then freeze it. But when you do that and you don't use an ice cream maker, it becomes kind of more like an ice. So don't follow our recipe if you have a regular blender, but partially defrost your fruit or do what Anu said, and that is um, de totally defrost it and then, and then, and then freeze it. Or just it. use fresh strawberries. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, question for, um, Nora, what do you like? Oh, Nora went away. <laughs> Okay, when Nora comes back, we have a question for Nora. So, Ava, um, you were talking about the difference between cocoa and cacao. Can you repeat that for people who missed that? That was a really good discussion. So, cacao is like the natural, like, cacao beans. That's how they come. They're not roasted before they're ground up. And then with cocoa, you roast it, the beans and then you ground them. Okay. Um, Max, you were talking, you used chocolate chips, and that was really neat. So um, it's easy peasy to find vegan chocolate chips, right? Did you want to share a little bit about what to look for when you're buying chocolate chips? Um, I think that's, I don't really go shopping, um, so I think that's more of a question for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the brand that we use is the Enjoy Life, Enjoy Life and it's just, allergy free and it's, I think it's just like sugar, um, cocoa and maybe like one other ingredient, you know? Yeah. Uh, Anu, did you want to talk about when we buy chocolate, chocolate chips, besides being vegan, what else do we look for? Fair trade. Um, Cause some chocolate is made with like child labor and stuff. So it's best if you can buy fair trade, not to support stuff like that. Yeah, so Cody and I do programs in the schools. Actually, you do too, Ella. You're a teacher in the schools as well. And so I tell my kids, I say, would you like to take a field trip and work on a chocolate factory? And most of them say, it sounds great. And I said, and I tell them, it does sound great. But what if you go in the morning and it becomes noon or one o'clock and you're hungry and they say, you can't take a break for lunch and you keep working and then you're there till nightfall. It, that's, it's not fun. And that's what some chocolate is made with uh, essentially, you know, really bad child labor. So uh, we encourage, I encourage people to buy fair trade chocolate where the farmers are treated well and there's no, um, there's no um, child labor involved. Um, let's see, 
Um, Mia, what's it like cooking with a sibling? Do you guys cook together? Is it fun to cook together? Um, in, some of, if, yeah, in some of our shows, we cook together. Yeah, it's fun. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it's like. Right? <laughs> well, and Ava and Ella are experts at this. They have their little sister, Nora. Uh, do you guys enjoy cooking together? Yeah, Nora yeah. gets a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love your new kitchen. <laughs> Uh, great question from Patricia. How do I become a Food for Life instructor? So, Cody, could you take that one? Yeah, of course. So, Patricia, so mm -hmm. I think it's twice a year that the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has openings for um, applications to become a Food for Life instructor. And mm -hmm. uh, it's quite the process, um, but it's, you know, they, they you know, pick their, um, their, I guess, Food for Life instructor trainees, and then they have online classes now to become a Food for Life instructor. So it's been a lot more convenient for a lot of people instead of having to travel to the specific location. Um, and I think they usually do one, let's see, is it the springtime and then the fall time, I believe. So and they usually I think it's once a year now, I think. Is it once a year? Okay. I think, so. I think the last class they had about 60 some um, new Food for Life instructors. So they do take quite a few. Um, and if, I'm sure if you go to PCRM.org and search Food for Life Instructors, you should have some information pop up on that for, for more specifics. But yeah. yeah, the website's FFLclasses.org. Thank you. Yeah, FFL Classes. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Patricia and others, I encourage you, Faith, I encourage you to consider, uh, you know, uh, trying to become a Food for Life Instructor there. Uh, headquarters is very, very uh, choosy. I think they pick one out of every three of us who apply. <laughs> and it was quite a pr process, even when I became an instructor. Uh, now they do a lot of it online, maybe all of it, I'm not sure. But when we were there, it was two or three days and it was pretty intense. And we, uh, I just paid to recertify for this year. We we pay each year to, to have the license and we have, every month we have um, education. It's great. And I think the best thing for me of being a Food for Life instructor is getting to know people like Cody and Ella and many others. Um, this is one group I'm part of that I can unconditionally recommend somebody. If I never knew Ella, right, and somebody said, I'm in Rhode Island and I need some uh, cooking classes, I would recommend Ella without hesitation because I know to be a Food for Life instructor, you have to know a lot about food and nutrition. <laughs> Well, let's see. So far, we only have one person asking questions. So Patricia, unless somebody else asks questions, both prizes are yours. So I encourage, I know we have a number of other people watching. This is your last chance to pose a question. And if you pose a question, we'll, we'll randomly uh, draw. So last minute or two for questions. Um, Faith, did you want to share anything about your book? Would you like to share maybe um, uh, one or two um, ideas of how you develop your recipes? And are these recipes that your children have helped test or um, what, what, uh, how, how you develop the recipes? I need like a phone stand. So I wanted to show you some pictures from the book. I took all these pictures, um, with the help of a, of another photographer, um, a while ago, but I, um, just kind of made a list of the foods and ingredients and meals that my family likes the most and the ones that are also the easiest to make so that kids can make them themselves as much as possible. Um, I'm sure you kids here in the show have made a lot of things like this because you're really knowledgeable about um, plant-based recipes and stuff. So I'm sure it's all very familiar to you. But um, I tweak a lot of recipes. So like really popular common recipes, I you know, just change the ingredients to be whole plant food ingredients. And so that's kind of the main way that I create recipes is um, a lot of tweaking. But then I also sometimes just get flashes of inspiration and I just have an idea. I'm like, I could do this and this and this. And I do a lot of trial and error and my family can testify that there's a lot of bad food sometimes because you have to fail on your way to success. So... <laughs> Well, what is your family's favorite recipe? I would love to know. Or recipes. Yep, what you favorite. Like? Um, I think one of our favorites is the lentil tacos in the cookbook because 
It's super easy to make, but also my kids just really like it. It's not super spicy, but it still has really good flavor. And if you have an Instant Pot, you just put um, the lentils and vegetable broth and taco seasoning in the Instant Pot, and you're done. That's the taco filling. So it's a super easy and fast recipe when you don't have a lot of time. I'm going to have to try that. Well, yeah. We're so so glad, so delighted to have your book in our show this this time. I wanted to uh, show you a little bit about um, what Anu is busy with. Do you want to show show off some of your finished creations? Sure. So uh, as we were sitting down to Q&A, Anu mentioned, look at that. So she's an expert at origami. Wow. <laughs> she actually, about a month ago, flew to Chicago for an origami convention. <laughs> so she said, Daddy, can we, can we give away some um, origami uh, in, in a show? So I, I think maybe next show, if you guys like the idea, we could uh, one of our giveaways could be one of some, some of Anuragni's um, origami. What, what kinds of things have you made in or with origami? This is called the Miura fold, and it's really nice because you can, it's like kind of accordion. You can smash it down and it comes like that. Um, and, ooh, okay. I learned this at the convention. This is an icosahedron. Whoa. This is Snapology. Um, it's a specific type of, specific type of origami. And then this is a modular that I made. Oh, and then this is cool. This is made out of fortune tellers. And it's like a jewel kind of thing. Yeah, those are so funny. So um, let's quickly talk a little bit about holiday plans. We we homeschool, we've been homeschooling starting in first grade, right? <laughs> and so a news on a long break soon. Uh, um, how about, um, do you wanna tell everybody where you're going? I'm going to Australia to see my um, grandmother. Grand aunt. <laughs> and then um, how about um, Ella and Ava? What is your um, holiday like? I think we're mostly going to stay here, but like, I think the day after Christmas, we're going to go see our grandma. Yeah, we're going to go visit our grandparents. Nice. And me and Max, what's your holiday looking like? <laughs> they're looking at me because there's some last minute changes but we're definitely thinking about traveling um somewhere somewhere overseas so we'll see so patricia i'm going to uh since you're the only one there's a few other comments nobody else asked questions so patricia you get both <laughs> the spoons and the and faith's book so patricia can you acknowledge that and can you send me an email Dilip, you can reach any of us, any of the adults at, um, let's see, I'll say winner is Patricia, and please email me. Well, I'll just let just say it. So Patricia, can you email me at Dilip, and it's, my name's right there, D-I-L-I-P, at so manycooks.com, and then once you do, I will get you both the measuring spoons and the book. So hopefully you have that. You can acknowledge that, Patricia, and we'll, we'd be glad to get you the, the gifts. Does anybody have any final, and we'll, we'll, we'll wait for Patricia to say that she she acknowledges that. Um, do any of the kids have any questions for each other? So Anu, did you want to ask questions of any of them? Uh, Max, Mia, um, Ella, or Ava? Not really. Or anything they made, or are you going to try to make some of their dishes? Yeah. Okay. How about um, Ella? Do you have any questions of any other girls, or um, Max? Not really. Okay. Ava? Um, I do have a question for Mia. What is your favorite kind of jam to put in the cookies, like the thumbprint cookies you made? Um, I personally like every jelly and every jam, so it doesn't really matter, just whatever's in the fridge. I just put it in there, and it tastes good. So. Personally, I like the raspberry jam better, but we just ran out, so. Yeah. And then um, Max and Mia, do you guys have any questions? No. Okay. Um, Dilip, I have another question for Faith, if that's okay. Sure. Um, Faith, I was just wondering how you are um, managing your children being plant-based and like going to different places, you know, holidays and, and um, 
birthday parties. You know, I feel like uh, the Lipconi and I are asked this question all the time, and I just wanted to know how you guys. Yeah. I don't really know what the right answer is. It's really tricky. Most of my friends and, of course, my family knows the way that I try to eat. So um, it's not an issue every time. But when there is a lot of options, I, I do let my kids eat kind of whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to allow that agency. And so they've never had meat. And they're kind of ethically opposed to that. They don't want to eat an animal. But they have had some cheese and stuff at other people's houses. But I'm surprised at how much they kind of stick to the familiar foods that we usually have at our house. So um, I'm kind of a, I allow like a 90-10 mentality, like 90% whole food plant-based and like 10% wiggle room, you know? Yeah, thank you. And how old are your kids? They are really young. They're four, two and brand new. Oh, I see, I see, okay. How brand new? How old is the baby? <laughs> But she's born in August, so she's three months now. Oh, lucky you. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I have baby lust. <laughs> I love babies. <laughs> I was telling your mom when I knew was I'm, I was, I'm a stay-at-home dad. So when she was, I don't know if you know the story, when she was very little, we used to always go to parks and we'd always do fun things. And so at one point we were considering my being a nanny to another one. We, so I'd have two of you, which would have been really fun taking oh, both of you places. Almost did that, so. Anyhow, thanks so much, Faith, for your book, for joining our show. Uh, Cody, do you have any last comments? Do you, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about our next So Many Cooks in the Kitchen show? Sure. Well, first, I just want to thank Faith for joining us today. We really love your cookbook, and we're planning on really diving more into it over the holiday season. So thank you for, for making that book for us. We are so thrilled to have it and highly recommend it to other people. Um, <laughs> Our next show's coming up um, in January, the adult show, So Many Cooks in the Kitchen, and it's so much citrus, which I know is one of Dillip's favorite ingredients. He loves tangerines, let me tell you. I've never <laughs> seen anybody love citrus like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that show. <laughs> and then, Ella, did you have any final comments? No, just thank you everybody for coming. And again, thank you, Faith. It was uh, lovely meeting you. And we don't have your book yet, but it's going to be on our for you know next purchase. We want to make sure yeah. we grab it. It looks very good. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's so fun to meet you. And I'm really impressed by your work. Thanks. Thank thanks. Yeah. And thanks. thanks, everybody, for watching the show. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. If you're celebrating Hanukkah or Christmas, I guess Eid has passed. Diwali has passed. Um, um, there's an important New Year's. New Year's, of course, and Kwanzaa's coming up. So, <laughs> but I think all of us celebrate New Year's. So, Christmas. Christmas, I did say Christmas, Merry Christmas. And so, happy holidays and see you guys at the Citrus Show. And then, you guys are cooking again in February. We haven't set a date or or a topic. We have dates for the Cook Show all the way through May at this point, though. <laughs> we should let folks know. So, happy holidays and, uh, and take care. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Happy holidays. So many kids in the kitchen. We hope you have enjoyed watching us cook. Thank you for watching. We hope to be back in a few months. Let us know what you would like to see us cook. In the meantime, watch our parents. So many cooks in the kitchen. So many kids in the kitchen. Plant-based food to prepare. So many kids in the kitchen with ideas we're happy to share.